I mean, this this has this this is a it's, this is a great tradition that goes back to I'm I'm popping to Anne Frank, right? Right. Uh, right. Or to the Underground Railroad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It certainly has roots in, in everything you just said, and um, certainly the fugitive, fugitive slave law as well. Mm -hmm. It's so interesting to me. We talked to Jack about this many times about sort of the progressive wing of religion, right? Mm -hmm. Which a mm -hmm. lot of people right. who were brought up in religion, me, uh, <laughs> but a lot of people were brought up to to sort of see the conservative uh, Christians, right? The the right wing that are so kind of cruel and against the real actual religious teachings, right? Mm -hmm. And it's nice to see these things happen every now and then where you see people really embrace the true meaning of religion and Christianity and do things like this, mm -hmm. um, which I think gets lost a lot when you look at specifically the way that a lot of Republican politicians hang on to religion. Right, and I think a big part of that is that now we're starting to see a very vocal religious left that stands yeah. up in front of microphones, yeah. and they have yeah. rock stars that go and speak at the Democratic National Convention, like William Barber. Um, but a lot of the the, the more you know hard edged work, like the kinds of stuff that we're seeing in the Home Sanctuary Movement and the Sanctuary Movement writ large, are done quietly by, in some ways, by design. So the people who, you know to help protect those that they are taking in, um, but they're done quietly by these 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 quiet activists who believe this. It's part of their faith. And they just, it, this is how they live it out on our day to day. Um, so they're less likely to stand in front of a pulpit and preach about it, more likely just to quietly, you know, let, um, let somebody live in their home. Has the, uh, have any of these, um, particularly home sanctuary or the religious place of worship sanctuaries, been challenged yet in the courts? Not home sanctuaries currently. Um, well, potentially in 1980s, actually, in 1980s. Yeah. They, People were convicted, and you had reverends and nuns, and you know all these clergy members who were who received uh, criminal convictions for them, but there was never any jail time for them. And and they traditionally never you know raided the churches and synagogues themselves. Yeah. Now what we've started to see recently under the Trump administration is while they have yet to raid a physical church, um, they've started to skirt the line. So a group of um, undocumented immigrants were picked up as they left a church hypothermia center um, in the last couple of months. Um, and so you're starting to see these these raids happen across the street and closer and closer and closer to the physical um, uh, you know property of a church, and so there's a growing concern that you know this memo that's kind of been protecting congregations from being raided by ICE um, you know might be thrown out the window one day. And I, and I believe that's also, in addition to churches, it's also hospitals and schools. And we've already kind of started to see hospitals be a place where folks can, you know, also be. It, what was the story? It was somebody who was there and sick, and then they, they returned them to detention. Um, there was somebody a few weeks ago that, that had that story. Do you remember? I mean, that actually hasn't just been the case under the Trump administration. Right. It has happened in the Obama oh, yeah. administration, yeah. too, where people who are in comas have been deported back to our mm. countries. But that's another story. You know, for like, <laughs> for, for something like this, you know, the sensitive locations memo that Jack was just talking about, you know, it is a guidance. It's not law. It's just basically um, a, a guidance for um, immigration agents to exercise prosecutorial discretion to not go after some of these immigrants. But in, in some cases, you know, these immigrants or these immigration agents can get authority from a supervisor or if they have a warrant then yes they can breach church doors so people have to keep that in mind mm -hmm. uh, i just think this is so important and so um it's so exciting to hear that this movement is underway and that people are really i believe living what christianity is all about and are willing to put themselves on the line mm -hmm. um i mean this this is certainly something that the pope uh, I'm Absolutely. sure is a, a thousand percent behind, right? He and has said, see, you know, he has said that in Europe, he has asked every congregation to take in at least one refugee family. That's mm -hmm. what he said in the past. But to see Jews and Christians and Muslims Absolutely. all stand up and say, you know, this is what our faith teaches us that we that we should be out protecting you know, the immigrants and protecting protect the people who need help the most, right? That's right. what it's all about. I mean. I, if you read the New Testament, I don't see how you could come to any other conclusion. But I'm sure even within the religious community, within the faith community, if you will, that there are some people don't 
go along, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, what you'll see um, from, from from some conservative positions, like particularly within the religious right. right? I doubt that they're doing this for, for example, on the campus of Liberty University. Yeah, probably, probably not. That's not. <laughs> well, what, what, what you'll, what's interesting is what you'll hear them say is they'll say, um, you know, the the Bible teaches you to be subservient to whoever the lo- the the local government is, which is both true and untrue. It's like an interesting, sure. complex. Like Peter theological. said, that's sort of the faith that I was raised up in. <laughs> was, me Catholic, you Baptist. Yeah. But, you know. The, the the law was the law. The government was a government, right? And mm-hmm. you just you may not like it, but you you had to obey it. Which which uh, you know is is a is a theological argument that's that's not necessarily consistent. You can you can hear any number of like Martin Luther King obviously didn't agree with that. Going to say, uh, right? yeah. <laughs> and uh, and also that they have, conservative Christians haven't always been consistent in their belief in that either. The same people who say you should follow the law and not harbor immigrants are often the same people who say, well, you know, go break the Johnson Amendment and yeah. preach politics from your pulpit and direct defiance of federal law. Um, and so it's it's people kind of often pick and choose in that space. Um, but yeah, there's there's a division within the faith community over this. Although I will note this network of people who have who have declared sanctuary is broader than usual um, in the sense that you'll have not only you know uh, different forms of Christians and even some conservative Christians. You also have um, you know Muslims and Jews and also Buddhists, like all the prominent American Buddhists. Like this, not all of them, but like mm-hmm. a, a massive percentage of their leadership signed on to like declaring themselves, you know, uh, aligned with sanctuary, including um, encouraging their communities to, to participate. Also, um, Hindu temples. So you're seeing like a really broad network of people like declare themselves um, willing to offer sanctuary. So we'll see how many actually end up doing it. But it is it is an unusually large movement for the religious left. 